young animal. The young animal continues to be able to regenerate just as well. Now let's look at an old animal who is paired with another old animal. Again, another control, which tells us that the actual procedure itself isn't changing anything about the way in which these animals can regenerate. The punchline is here. If the old animal is injured when paired with a young animal, it regains the capacity to regenerate its muscle. So that's pretty astounding. That means that there's something about the young animal's environment which is affecting the old animal. OK, so the obvious answer you're all thinking, I'm sure, is, well, that's easy. They're just stem cells in the young animal that are going over into the old animal and doing the job. I mean, that's the obvious answer to this. So in order to test for this, um, we uh, looked in detail at the capacity for the young animal to actually both inactivate the, uh, activate the notch pathway and to deliver cells to the old animal. So first what we're going to see here is that in fact the notch pathway is activated in old animal cells if cultured in a dish with young animal serum. Now the serum does not have any cells in it. It's just the stuff that your blood, floats, your blood cells float around in. It's full of factors and those factors are capable of activating the notch pathway in the old stem cells. So that tells us that it's probably not cells. And here's just the data to suggest that that's the case. Here you're looking at young cells on the left with serum from young and old, same number of notch positive cells. The old cells that are exposed to either young or old serum either have less notch as we see in the previous slide, but they also have the capacity to activate notch with young serum. Now, Finally, in a real proof of concept in the actual animal, you can mark the cells in the young animal by using a transgenic animal. And that allows you to follow the cells if they do move over at all. So the way we do this is to use a young animal that has a green fluorescent protein transgene in every one of its cells. And then we look in the old animal after injury and see whether, in fact, there are any green cells in that old animal. And the answer is there are not. So although the cells are moving around, those muscle cells are actually controlling the regeneration of the old animal's injury in response to young factors. So before we take questions then, we'll just review what we've seen so far. We can attribute some of the de uh, decrement in function in aging to decreased number of cells, at least in skeletal muscle. Those cells don't work as well, and the environment in which they find themselves is not as conducive. So probably what we're looking at here is a mixture of different factors. Lower stem cells, worse environment. And we're now poised in the field to ask the questions, if we change the environment, can we change the number of stem cells? Can we actually rejuvenate ourselves? if we understand more about the fountain of youth, the famous fountain of youth, which appears to be floating around in all of your bloodstreams and less so in mine. So obviously, we'd love to know what are those factors. And now we're in a wonderful position to be able to answer that question with a systematic approach. We have a test, and we have a question in which we can couch that test. So finally, then we can ask the question for our next part of the talk, are there factors that we already know about that could perhaps be some of these candidate factors? And are there ways in which we can improve both the capacity to regenerate our own tissues, but also perhaps to improve the capacity for stem cell therapy to work better in older people? And I'll stop there, and I'll take questions. Yes. I was wondering how um, muscle fibers actually know if they're injured or not in, in a molecular sense. Well, that's a very good question. And um, the problem is, is that this is um, a field that I love. And so you're going to have to stop me from warbling on. And therefore, what I'm going to say in a very short, uh, hopefully succinct answer is that there is a mechanical um, uh, effect on muscle, which is to literally destroy cells. And when cells are 
burst apart, there is an immediate response in the surrounding tissue of any organ. Um, and what happens, among other things, is that signals are sent out from that injured area to call in um, important other cells from the bloodstream, such as the inflammatory cells, the cells that might be there who need to actually clean up the mess to take away the dead cells and make sure that those dead cells are appropriately degraded and to couch, if this is a surface wound, to somehow close it to keep it from getting infected. Each one of those populations of cells that comes into the area is a potent source of factors itself. So what we're trying to figure out now is what are the factors that are coming from the injured tissue versus what are the factors that are coming from the cells that are coming in to help clean up the mess. Just like that. <laughs> Concentration. Yes. I'm, I'm going to save this one for you. All right. uh, why is it that despite the lower amount of stem cell contribution, that the re amount of regeneration is the same? In which case? Like um, uh, in the chart, we had a decreasing triangle, decreasing amount of cell contribution. That's right. There's still high regeneration in the... Oh, high. I'm sorry, in that middle part, in, yeah. those, middle, in those middle tissues. Yeah. Um, we believe that those tissues have been somehow programmed to be able to regenerate because they're constantly in very heavy use. So if you think about the two tissues that were mentioned, skeletal muscle and liver, that are in that... These are tissues that are not in high turnover mode. <clears throat> That is to say, they're not actually being sloughed off the way the intestine or the skin is. But they are also prone to injury. In the case of liver, it's because of toxins or waste products that could actually injure the cells. In the case of muscle, you actually injure your muscle when you go to the gym. That's why it's highly not recommended. But at any rate, you can actually feel no pain, no gain. That is injury. And that means that your muscle has to have a way to rejuvenate itself. However, we believe that in those cases, the amount of turnover is not as great as it is in things like the skin. And therefore, we're just in a sort of an intermediate stage. But this is somewhat of a hypothetical um, uh, gradation. And obviously, each, uh, each tissue type has a different way of doing this uh, repair process. OK? And this one's the easy one. Yes? If we do happen to make the old muscle cells look young by changing their environment or by just changing or putting like young cells into the old cells, um, wouldn't it be like most likely that it would just relapse back into the way it was before we changed its environment just because cells are so just comfortable with their uh, beginning environment? Well, if in fact the argument is that the environment can change the cell, or perhaps the better way to say it is that the cell has no intrinsic reason not to be able to respond to the environment, not to be able to turn on its notch signaling pathway, or to proliferate in the way that it needs to do. Um, clearly, uh, the minute that we, sew, uh, w that we s take out the stitches and separate those two mice, the old mouse will go back to being weak again. There's no question about it. So this is not a solution. Do not get any old person to allow you to suture yourself to them. <laughs> because you'd have to stay there for the rest of your life, and you'd get old too. And then it wouldn't work anymore. Okay. So basically, um, we're looking to think about ways to use that proof of principle to isolate the molecules involved. Now, those molecules might be things that we can actually deliver as therapeutics in a much more consistent and lengthy way to stave off some of the problems associated with aging. The lady with the dark jacket and the red scarf around her neck. Okay. Um, um, I've heard of a disease, um, I'm not sure what it's called, um, but it's where young kids get really, they age really fast. And um, but they like their their age is still the same and their personality is like it has really um, it's like still young, but um, don't they still keep their stem cells from like um, 